Hello Year 12. This video should match up with the lesson titled Codominance. So in our previous lesson we looked at monohybrid and dihybrid inheritance and you should have had practice on drawing Punnett squares and constructing genetic crosses for both one characteristic and two characteristics. So now we're looking at something called codominance. What does this mean? So if we break down the word, we should have an understanding that co represents together and dominant represents always expressed in the phenotype. So how can you get two dominant uh, phenotypes being expressed? All right, so if we take an example of plants and the petals of plants, and we say that there's some red petals, which would be dominant, and we can have some yellow petals, which would be recessive. So how could we denote that? We do like our normal inheritance, which you looked at last lesson. We've got a capital R for red, and we've got a lowercase r for yellow. Now, let's say, for example, that there is now a different coloured petal that you see, and it is pink. How can that be? It can't be a combination of red and yellow, so it must be a combination of two other things. So it could be red and white, for example. So let's say that it's a combination of red and white to give you pink. So how are we going to use our notations to draw a Punnett square constructed genetic cross with two dominant alleles? So now we need to bring in something called the superscript. Now you've written a superscript or drawn superscripts before. If you think back to your biological molecules topic, you saw hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions in terms of water. So what we're saying here is that the superscript would be the positive charge that you put with H plus and the negative when you are drawing or writing OH minus. So how are we going to apply that to our codominance here? Now the question is, how can you get this pink petal offspring? How does it come about? So let us use our Punnett square and genetic cross to show this. So this time I'm using, instead of A, I'm using C to represent color. And again, R, R for red and W for white. So constructing our Punnett square using our mono hybrid inheritance, because we are looking at one characteristic here, we're gonna use our red, so homozygous for red and, <clears throat> and homozygous for white. Now, if we can get our genotypes now, what we should come out with is all of our offspring being pink here. So all of our offspring having one allele for red and one allele for white, all of them being pink. Now, going back to our previous lesson, we gave, I gave you the example of Mendel and his pea plants. Now, if we think about the beginning of that example, he had two parents he crossed them together and all of his offspring had a certain phenotype, round yellow. Now it's very similar to this example here. All of our offspring are the same. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cross two of our offspring. Now we denoted that in our last lesson with F1 generation. So all of the offspring here, F1, should be pink. So we're going to do our genetic cross with two uh F1 generation offspring and we're going to get our Punnett square and see what we come up with in this next situation. So if we look at our offspring genotypes now we should see that one of our offspring should be all red so two alleles for red one of our offspring should have two alleles for white, so all white, but we should have two of our offspring being pink, so having one allele for red and one allele for white. So we can see now that this is how we get the codominance. Both of them are expressed, the red and the white are expressed. Now again we're going to do our ratios and we're going to see what we come out with. We should have three phenotypes red white and pink what are the ratios we should see one for red 
one for white and two for pink. So our ratio of red to pink to white would be one to two to one, or red to white to pink being one to one to two. So that is a new ratio that you get as a result of having co-dominance. Now in humans, this co-dominance is very important and it introduces a new concept called multiple alleles. So typically when you've been studying inheritance, you'll look at two alleles for one gene. In this case now, we're going to look at three alleles for one gene. Now what the example is in humans is for blood type. Now blood type is a result of carbohydrates that have been attached to your red blood cells. So in the case of having a blood type of A, you can have certain antigen that are attached to the surface of the red blood cells. If it's B, it's going to be a different type. If it's O, a blood type of O, you will have none of these antigens that are present on the surface of the red blood cell. Now, if we think of antigen <clears throat> A or IA as our phenotype now, what genotype can give us this phenotype of blood type A or IA? What can give us B and what can give us O? So the combination of alleles that we can that can give us our IA or antigen A phenotype is IA, IA. For B, it's IB, IB. And for O, it's IO, IO. The interesting thing now is, is that we can get some other possible genotypes to give us our antigen B, our antigen A. So if we have an allele for IA and an allele for IO together, the phenotype you'll get is IA. If we have IB and IO, the phenotype we can get is B. So we can see here in this case that B and A are dominant to O. O is recessive to both A and B. So what about the blood type AB? What will be the genotype for AB? Well, the answer is it will be IA, IB. And that is telling you that A and B are co-dominant. Okay, so if we're looking at the answers to these questions now, you're just doing your standard Punnett square and just trying to figure out what the genotypes are. So AB crossed with AO, you should get IAIA, IAIB, IAIO, IBIO. It's an important thing to realise that during all of these examples that I'm doing here, and what you'll probably see in the textbook as well, is that if you have a situation where you're looking at the codominance of AB, they're always writing A first to B and then B afterwards. It does, this does not mean that A is dominant and B is recessive. Please understand that AB is codominant. The only reason is just for alphabetical purposes. So A before B in the alphabet. If you write IB, IA, it cannot be wrong because it is codominance. So it is not suggesting that B is dominant to A or A is dominant to B. So for the ratios now, we're looking at ratio of phenotypes that I'm telling you. So for our first question, the ratio of phenotypes would be two for A, one for AB and one for B. For our second one, we have two of our genotypes for AB and we have two which are AO. So if we're writing it from our Punnett square, it'd be two to two, but of course we always try to simplify. So it would be actually one to one. Whereas in our third one, we've got AA for one parent and OO for another parent. So that should tell you that all of the offspring should be AO, meaning all of the offspring should have blood type A. 100% would be the probability So looking at our exam question here, 
the information tells us that there is a capital H allele for hornless, lowercase h allele for horned condition. But there is also a C superscript R for red and C superscript W for white coat. So please make sure that you understand then that by looking at this superscript, it's already telling us that there must be some co-dominance that's involved. So our question A says, explain what is meant by a dominant allele. Dominant allele from GCSE, we realize that it's always expressed in the phenotype. For question B, name the relationship between the two alleles that control coat color. Well, remember from our superscript, we have two there. So it is suggesting to us that it's co-dominance. It shouldn't be dihybrid inheritance because then we'd be looking at two characteristics when the question they said control coat color. It's not multiple alleles just yet because they've only seen two alleles that they've told us, not a third one. So if it's multiple alleles, it has to be more than two. So as I showed you in the last exam question from our monohybrid and dihybrid lesson, you're going to see this new format for writing out exam questions that is asking you to show genetic diagrams. Parental genotypes are the first thing that needs to be answered. The parental phenotypes are at the top. So if it's a horned roan that you are looking for, you go back to the information at the top of the page and at the top of the question and a horned condition, we know we're looking for a lowercase h allele that needs to be in there. So if it's a horned condition in the phenotype and the H allele is responsible for that, we remember that our recessive phenotype must have two copies of that recessive allele. So you should be doing a lowercase h, lowercase h for our horn. For roan, the information does tell us that a roan cattle have a mixture of red and white hairs. So that must mean that the Rhone condition must be the co-dominant phenotype, meaning we should have C superscript R, C superscript W for our horned Rhone. For the hornless white, for hornless, because it's capital H, we need at least one of those. So how do we know now whether it's going to be homozygous dominant or heterozygous? If we look at the information just above question C, it does say, Horned roan cattle were crossed with white cattle heterozygous for the hornless condition. So that means it should be capital H, lowercase h. Where it's asking us now for the white, what we need to put then must be C superscript W, C superscript W. For our gametes then, we must then look at the potential combinations from each parent. So from our horned roan, we must be able to get H, lowercase h, and C superscript R for one, and he, lowercase h and C superscript W for the other. So two gametes come in from one parent there. And from the other hornless white parent, again, it should be only two gametes potentially, one capital H and C superscript W and one lowercase h and C superscript W. So those are your four gametes that are coming from your parents. So looking for the offspring genotypes now, we just need to cross these gametes. So if it's easier for you to do, you could do a, a quick Punnett square on a piece of paper, or if you can do it visually just by looking at it, you can do the crosses then. Either, either way is fine as long as you get the right genotypes. That's all we need. The next thing, of course, that we must write down are the offspring phenotypes. So here we have to look at the information again so we do not get confused. We need to remember if a offspring or any of these organisms of cattle are horned, that must mean that they have homozygous recessive. Our first offspring genotype is heterozygous for our horned condition. 
So that must mean that they are hornless. Whereas they have both R and W for the coat, which means that they're roan. So the first offspring phenotype will be hornless roan. The second one has homozygous recessive for our horn condition. So it's going to be horned by showing C superscript R, C superscript W. So it should be roan. So the second one will be horn roan. Our third genotype is heterozygous for our horn condition. So it should be hornless, but it's only W's that we can see for our coat. So it needs to be white. So it should be hornless white. Whereas for our fourth and final one, it should be horned white. So those are our four offspring phenotypes now. So by looking at our phenotypes that we have here, we can see that we've got four different genotypes, four different phenotypes. So the ratio of offspring phenotypes should be one to one to one to one. This is a four mark question. So for you to pick up four marks, you will need the following. You need one mark for the parental genotypes, one mark for the correct gametes, one mark for derivation of correct offspring genotypes, and one mark for the ratio of the offspring. Again, just like the previous question I gave you, offspring phenotypes, you should not get a mark.